All right, listen up, guys. So a little birdie told me that somebody recently made a video on Hunter Avalon's decision to leave the right. And normally, I wouldn't care about that too much because a fuckload of people got real upset about it. And I want to reiterate this one more time and then not repeat it again for the rest of this segment. Goodness, excuse me. And then not repeat it again. Hunter Avalon's super cool. Super cool. Not cringe. Super cool. That's my official, okay? That's my official word on it, okay? Hunter Avalon, very, very brave what he did. When you have a financial incentivization on YouTube to stick to a given set of political talking points, moving off those talking points is a life decision. That's a career change. It's not just, it's not just like, oh, wow, he changed its mind. It's, oh, wow, he threatened his entire livelihood to bring about this outcome. I do not agree with you, Vosh. I know you don't, Bunny Mew. I know you don't. A little cringe sometimes? We're all a little cringe sometimes. Hyper as if I've posted cringe in this very stream so far. Don't lie to me. That's what I'm talking about. Now, the reason why I wanted to peek this video is because I am apparently referenced extensively, and I want to see what arguments this person has made. What's more, when I put that I would be going over this video in the stream title last night, the pre-stream, um, apparently this person, Actual Justice Warrior, my arch nemesis because we have almost the exact same number of subscribers, um, said that they would be willing to debate me sometime and that they would crush me or something. I don't know what we would actually debate on because I've never seen any of his videos and I don't know what the content of this video is so i think so i feel like we have to we have to preempt the discussion a little bit um uh, uh, uh by seeing what's going on here you know um but yeah so here's my goal this is about hunter not me and while i do stan hunter i'm not going to fucking like jerk him off every single time something's bad about him is said all right that's not my goal here i'm here i'm here as an impartial fact checker I'm just here to I'm just I'm just interested. What's going on here? What's the arguments? I'm interested. Hunter Avalon is a wildly successful right-leaning YouTuber on this platform. Avalon? I'm sure for most of you, the guy doesn't really need an introduction. He's been on the platform for about five, maybe six years. He has a channel that's at around 650,000 subscribers. What a king. God, one day, one day, I'm gonna get up there. So most of you who watch my videos have probably come across one or two of his videos minimum at the time of me putting out this video. However, a lot of his subscribers were recently surprised and- Oh look, he's got a fake uh, 50K subscriber uh, thingy. I, I, I'm not hating or anything. I, I wish I had a little 50K subscriber thingy. Some of them were outright stunned at Hunter's latest video about how he is in fact leaving the right because Hunter Avalon no longer considers himself Why a Avalon? Now this change didn't surprise me, because prior to making videos on this channel that you're watching now, I was somebody in the audience consuming videos from other content creators. And while I was watching these other creators, I would start to notice that some of them were putting forward an ideologically based argument, while others were- Based on what? just parroting the surface level talking points of those arguments without really understanding them. And I always felt like Hunter Avalon was one of those creators. And by the way, this is something that- Oh shit, thank you. I don't know what a czar is, but I'm gonna check that out soon. That he now acknowledges in his video about leaving the right, that he really wasn't understanding the underlying nature of conservatism. He was just parroting the superficial talking points. And in fact, he felt like he had to rather than come to his own conclusions while making videos on his channel. That's okay. Huh. For a long time, I didn't really ah, think it was. Better microphone quality. Whew, that's a jump. Was, and I thought that I was going to be ostracized and out, and like kind of outcasted from right-wing circles, which I, I was. Um, I basically come to a point where I'm like, I no longer agree with the right on LGBT issues. I no longer agree King. with some of the far right's ideas on... Uh, black people or on whether or not this country is supposed to be a white country only or something and I had to kind of Think to myself the purpose of this channel was for me to talk and for me to share my authentic genuine opinions and If I no longer can do that out of fear of pissing off my audience or Pissing off my fan base or losing subscribers or something like I just I would just oh. kind of Hey I know that guy.
repeat what I heard from other right-leaning people. And the other reason this didn't surprise me is because you guys told me specifically multiple times in the comments of my videos. Dude, my beard was so bushy back then. Look at this guy. I just, I would just kind of repeat what I heard from other. Look at this. Holy fuck. You gotta grow it out again. Right-leaning people. And the other reason this didn't surprise me is because you guys told me specifically multiple times in the comments of my videos to go and debate Vosh. And when you guys tell me that I need to go debate someone, I actually look into them. And I saw a video with Vosh and Hunter Avalon that I assumed was a debate. However, upon listening to that video, I discovered that Hunter Avalon, months ago, has moved significantly to the left, and it's a much bigger move than Hunter even implies in his video about him leaving the right. For instance, Hunter has endorsed the idea that all the online right content creators, or at least a huge portion of the online right content creators, are actually alt-right Nazis and or fascist figures, or people- Has he said that? Wait, has Hunter Avalon said that? I know that a lot, I, I know that a lot of them are, but I don't know if he's said that. People that are pulling young people towards Nazis, alt-right, or fascism. If you're a conservative in this country, there's no good outlet for you. There, there are no good figures for you to aspire to because, the, because most of the online right-wing circuit uh. are either... Nazis, Nazis or grifters, grifters. and the ones that aren't ones either that aren't are, are, either. are are sometimes bad shit because batshit. all you have set up in all front you of have you set up in are front bad of role models. Bad role models. Um, you have hideously cruel hideously people, cruel for, example, people like for example like Stephen Crowder like Stephen for the whole point of his program is whole teaching the program. audience to, to hate and audience. think nothing of the people um people. He, he he derides <laughs> whether they be yeah, Im I, yeah immigrants I, or trans people I hate Crowder to be honest I've always I've <laughs> always disliked Crowder I'm actually like I I've we I've done some research on Blair and she's just an all around horrible person. Like uh, Sargon of Akkad, who in my last debate with him promoted ethno nationalism, uh, spent years doing nothing but like making fun of like cringe feminists or what have you. Uh, uh, um, no bullshit, you know, no bullshit. Yes, yeah, I do. no bullshit to Neil. <laughs> the hesitation in his voice. Wait, how? Wait, how long of segments are we cutting from my stream here without commentary? Because are... some of these other people, like, I don't know. I don't really know if Roaming Millennial or Lauren Chen is like a neo-Nazi or if she's like, I think she's Roman, I think she's a fascist. I don't think she's bitten down on the JQ uh, just like, yet. A lot of these people, like, I know them personally. Like, I've been to Blair White's house. I've hung out in her apartment with her. Uh, uh, okay. Like, <laughs> that he does you, like... you can go watch my video if you want. Now, before we get into where Hunter's positions actually are that he doesn't tell you about in his video about him leaving the right, we have to go over his video of him leaving the right. Now, unfortunately, the first 10 to 15 minutes of Hunter Avalon's video about him leaving the right are about his relationship with his then girlfriend and now wife. And I don't really want to talk about his wife. As far as I can tell, she's not a public figure. And despite the comments and tweets that I'm getting that Hunter Avalon's wife is somehow an SJW that moved Hunter Avalon significantly to the left, I haven't really seen enough evidence for that. And again, since Hunter... What is the... What is the purpose of this video? Can somebody in chat take a guess? Is the purpose of this video to just archive like a, a sort of like an investigation into why hunter left the right to say hunter was never really part of the right oh interesting hunter is the public figure and he's the one who presented himself as this conservative thought leader on the internet I think it's way more important to analyze what actually is happening with Hunter, and I think the Vosh interview is way more indicative of where he is than nebulous rumors about the mother of his children. Oh, also, shit. the first 10 to 15 minutes of Hunter's video can be- I'm cl- I'm- You've heard it here, folks. I'm now closer to Hunter than Hunter's wife is. <laughs> summed up in about a minute, maybe 30 seconds. Hunter was dating a girl, he got her pregnant, he was- mm -hmm. His child was born, he got back together with- Yeah, we, we- And I'm sure a huge portion of you guys out there in the audience are happy for Hunter that he worked it out with his then-girlfriend, now-wife, mm -hmm. and he's- Kind of to be expected. YouTubers change, people change, um, so- It for- uh, 
been wrong about this. What? It forced me to think about things. If I could be so wrong about this, what else could I be wrong about this? And it forced me to look at... Wait. Is he making fun of the concept of introspection? If I could be so wrong about this, what else could I be wrong about this? And it forced me Wait, to... what? Wait, what? <laughs> what? Is... <laughs> Is that meant to be something worthy of mockery? Like, hey, I just realized a preconceived belief I had was incorrupt. Incorrect. Maybe I should try to reflect on other ones I have. Is that surprising? I don't know. I don't know anything about Actual Justice Warrior except for the fact that he's named Actual Justice Warrior. <laughs> to look at other opinions and other positions I might hold and think, is there anything else that I could be wrong about? That I once thought that I was so right about that maybe now I'm wrong about? wrong about stuff. Wait, are you doing it again? What? This is how, this is how you critically inspect your beliefs and come to better ones. That That's how it works. That's how you do it. What? Conservatives don't even deny this. Conservatives, but this is how you get radicalized as conservative too. You you realize what, like, wow, I was so wrong. I was taught the dogma of equality, but now I realize that men and women really aren't the same. You know, what else could I be wrong about? This is, this is how everyone changes their minds. You, you, you realize you have like these fundamental beliefs that, that inform how you perceive the world around you. And if one of those beliefs gets challenged, you have to recognize that that's going to have a cascading effect on the other things that you believe in. That's how it works. I remember after that debate thinking, I was like, do I just move on? But like, I may have been wrong about something. I don't want to be wrong. Because I care about truth now, and I cared about truth then. Now, this point I found incredibly funny. The idea that Hunter Avalon has changed his positions because back then, he cared about truth, and now, for sure, he still cares about truth. What? When in reality, Hunter Avalon, at least back then, maybe he's changed and he thinks that the left wing has more answers because he cares about truth now, it's clear that he didn't before because, again, Hunter Avalon was not researching deep into the topics that he was talking about. Wait, is this guy- Wait, is this guy making the argument that he was never really a conservative? Like he, like he didn't do a good enough job being a conservative? Yeah, wait, wait, is he left? I don't think this guy is left. Uh, okay, so if I- uh, If I have- if I have to try and piece this together, I think the argument that's being made here I think the ultimate argue that's going to be made here is one that Hunter Avalon was always dumb and he never knew what he was talking about and now he's over on the left because he still doesn't know what he's talking about. The, I, I, have a, I have a feeling that's like the vibe we're going to be getting from this. For what, for what it's worth though, Hunter Avalon's videos back when he was a conservative were about as, if not slightly more, researched than your average, like, clickbaity reactionary videos back at that time. Um, I would say that Hunter Avalon's videos were substantially higher quality than Blair White's. Um, they're definitely higher qualities than, like, no bullshit. Um, Sargon of Akkad isn't even on this chart. Wherever, wherever, Sargon of Akkad is, is, doesn't even fit, like, in the box that I'm drawing right now. I'm pretty sure, like, my contention with Hunter Avalon was never that he, like, didn't do research because not doing research is how you become a conservative on social issues. What, like, how do you, th how else could you possibly believe the shit conservative people believe about trans people? Like, not doing research is part of the game. You, you can't, you can't do research as a conservative into trans issues and then make a conservative video about trans people. It doesn't work that way. The lack of research is what enables those perspectives. So I, I, I get, I don't know, like, I guess I haven't really thought about Hunter's old videos in that way. I think that Hunter's newer videos are actually pretty darn well researched, you know? Like, they're not like cuck philosophy tier, or like three arrows tier, like deep academic dives or anything. But I, I think they're pretty good. You can do bad research. Okay, yeah, if you count research as like reading poll threads or something. I don't know. He was giving superficial commentary. That's why, and I pointed this out in a previous video, when he was asked about single-payer healthcare by Vosh, 
he had no idea what he was talking about. He assumed that single payer was the system that we currently have in the United States of America. Hunter, what are your thoughts on single payer healthcare? Single payer healthcare, I guess that's what, single payer healthcare versus um, uh, f universal healthcare? Is that kind of where that's that discussion Yeah, I is? guess, I uh, so probably that. single payer as opposed to like public option or, or what we currently have. Well, single payer is universal. That's the point. It's a single payer. There's a single entity you get it from, and it applies to everyone. Like, it's a type of universal healthcare. If I had well, I actually, you know what? I'm going to have to run right after this, but I mm -hmm. wanted to ask you this really quick. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Single payer is opposed? Wait, I'm, maybe I misheard. Hold on. Uh, f universal healthcare? That's what? Single payer healthcare versus, um, uh, oh, he said versus. I'm sorry. I thought he said single payer healthcare, like comma, like universal healthcare. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. Okay, I guess sure. You know what? I'm gonna have to run right. Out you guys want to know a secret? I didn't actually know the difference between single payer and public option until like seven months ago. Before that, I just assumed that they were both like just. I just fit them both in universal healthcare. Okay, I'm I'm not gonna lie, to you guys. I don't know how long ago this video that I did with Hunter Avalon is. I might have learned about it like a month before talking with him. What's the difference? Yeah. Um. So our current medical system is one in which we have private insurance companies. Um, and private hospitals, well, there can be public, uh, let's just focus on insurance. Um, you can have private, you have private insurance companies, and if you're very poor, or if you're old, you have Medicaid or Medicare, and that's your public insurance. Um, public option keeps private insurance as a concept, but you can buy into, you can opt into a government insurance program, which is free or costs very little. Single payer means there are no private insurance programs. It is only that single government option. Uh, single payer is what, um, is what uh, um, Bernie Sanders believes in and what I believe in. Um, public option is what Joe Biden would be pushing for, which is still a huge improvement on our current system. After this, but I mm -hmm. wanted to ask you this really quickly. So here's the thing. I agree that single payer healthcare is so expensive. And I really think it's legitimately disgusting that there are people in our country who can't get medical help. Like there are people who like can't seek help for mental illnesses because they can't afford therapy. I think that's really up. Mm -hmm. Here's my question for you, Bosch, because I know you're all about the universal healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, how like universal healthcare sounds good right but mm -hmm. i've heard like horror stories i guess from like the yeah okay so we just conflated these two i think that's fine you okay see so you cover somebody who actually does what they need i'm sorry but if you're someone who's passionate about the topics you cover somebody who actually does research who does the work to learn about these things in order to present them to your audience then you know one of the three basic and obvious terms used to describe universal healthcare. single payer is the canadian style system the idea that Hunter Avalon doesn't know that shows me that he doesn't really look into the topics that he talks about, and he never did before. I feel like this is really presumptuous. Again, like, I would consider myself, if I, if I may, like, a pretty intelligent dude. There are huge gaps in my knowledge. Also, I'm pretty sure Canada doesn't have a... Wait. Canada has private insurance. Do they not? Uh oh, no, no. Canadian Medicare provides coverage for approximately 70% of Canadians' healthcare needs. The remaining 30% is paid for through the private sector. Uh oh, uh oh. That's Canadian Medicare. That's the single payer. And there's the, <gasps> there's the second payer. Whoop! Oh, no, no. Canada has a public option system. All right. There's probably actually a little bit of, there's probably a little bit of variability when it comes to how different countries like term their types of healthcare. At least here in, um, at least here in the United States of America, when we refer to single payer, we're usually referring to what Bernie Sanders pushes for, which has no private insurance. Um, uh, uh, the only private like um, medical practices would be like, com like purely cosmetic, like plastic surgery, you know? Wait, hold on. 
Va Wait, hold on. Nebular, are you ready to have your career on my in my chat ended? Vosh, I like how you conveniently don't read the part that says private payers mostly pay for services that aren't offered through Medicare. You're a disingenuous shill and a pseudo-intellectual. Why would a single-payer system leave anything off the table with what it covers? That will inherently drive people towards other insurance programs that will cover those things. Which isn't single-payer. Just, it's just, just be a little careful. Just be a little careful here. We have private insurance, but they're all nonprofits and shit, along with being mandatory. So in practice, it's universal. Yeah, but you, single payer isn't the only form of universal health care. A public option is also universal because everyone has access to the um, the government program. Wait, hold on. The same person, Vosh, except it literally does check, read the wiki article you didn't just read. Can't wait till you grow the balls to talk to me instead of responding to my point and ignoring my follow-ups. Who the fuck are you? Wait, have you been... Are you, like, in my chat? Uh, who... Who... Who are you? <laughs> can we... Can we do the video first? I don't want to have to edit more than I... Than I already do, okay? I already do exactly no editing, and that's how I like to keep it, okay? Let's... Let's keep it this way. Just stick around to the end of the, uh, stream. Or not the end of the stream, the end of the video. And he's probably not doing that now. Well, I realize now that I was definitely wrong about some LGBT issues. Um, and I consider myself pretty pro-LGBT now. I even have True. tried to debate other conservatives on those issues. Um, there are just certain, certain issues that my perspective has changed on. Now, you'll notice that throughout the course of this video, that despite the fact that Hunter Avalon repeatedly says he was so wrong and he's changed his positions and he's changed a lot and he's a better person, so wrong, changed position, blah, 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 that it's actually incredibly difficult to pin down where Hunter Avalon has moved on key issues throughout the course of this video. Is that the point? The point of the video isn't about him, like, pushing out every single view he has. It's just about him generally, like, explaining his... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, it, I feel like he'll make his political positions pretty clear in his upcoming videos, right? In fact, the only solid position that he stated that he outright changed is his position on gay marriage. He went from against to for. Wait, hold on. I'm really sorry. Wait. Basically, dental and optical are seen as cosmetic because of stingy conservatives, but everything else is covered with the exception of medicine, which is highly subsidized. Okay, I consider medicine, dental, and optical to be essential medical, like, components of the human body that should probably be covered under a single-payer system. It's just public option. Like, that that's what it is. In, in Canada, like, there's a public option that everyone can buy into, but there are some elements of private insurance that remain that... that are used to cover sort of supplementary things. Um, true, but it's not a public option system. Wait, what does public option mean then? Does that mean something that I don't? So it's, a, it's just single payer with a bunch of holes? Public option means the public option competes with private options in the market. Canada doesn't have this. Private and public do not compete. Okay, interesting. Okay, wait. Then my definition might be incorrect. Um, wait, then what would the term be? So what would the term be then? Single payer with holes? Interesting. Well, that sucks. Wait, then what the fuck is the point? There is single payer for some needs and not others? Yeah, partial single payer? Interesting. Okay. I thought that public option just referred to any system where people can opt into a government, like, insurance program, but there are still private um, insurance companies that, like, compete there. But I guess if the government isn't even competing in optical and, um, and dental, then it wouldn't even matter. Multiplayer. Multiplayer system. Okay, then it would still be multiplayer. Okay, that's what we're getting. All right, this is what we're settling on. It's not public option, it's multiplayer because you have multiple entities that are, are competing um, 
uh, um, or not competing, sorry, that are providing different healthcare services. So multi-payer, okay? Not single-payer with holes. Multi-payer is probably the best descriptor, right? The difference with single-payer is that private insurance can't compete with government program and public option they can't compete. Okay, yeah, gotcha, okay. No, it's just very limited single-payer? Well, wouldn't it be multi-payer because there are multiple entities you can pay into? It wouldn't be multi-payer? It depends on the province. I'm going to kill myself. You could say the U.S. is multi-payer. We currently... Yeah, we have a multi-payer system, but that doesn't mean that they don't also. Okay, wait. Hold on. All right. I'm really sorry, guys. I don't like being wrong. If I'm wrong, I want to learn. Okay? Okay. So here is my understanding of the situation, okay? All right. It's multi-payer, but not a public option. Okay, multi-payer, which is M, versus single-payer. In single-payer, there is one institution that you can get your healthcare services from. But a bit a bit a bit a bit. In multi-payer, there are different institutions that you can get your medical services from. A public option, or PO, is one where the government and private insurance companies compete to provide medical services. Our current healthcare system in America is multi-payer and absolutely dominated by private industry, whereas it seems like Canada's system would be multi-payer, but it would be massively dominated by the government. And a public option would, would, could refer to, like, different types of a multi-payer system. No? It's a hybrid single-payer... Pay or private? You you can't hybrid. There has to be a term for this. No. Canada is single payer for some things. If it's single payer for some things, and not single payer for other things, that would mean it's multi payer, right? No. The private providers are paid for by the government. It's not a full single-payer system regardless of what they say. It's a hybrid system? This is hybrid! Okay, never mind. Alright, I take it all back. Never mind. I take it all back. All of you are stupid. Chad is giving literally, like, completely contrary answers. We're watching the video. Let's just assume actual Justice Warrior is right and I'm a cuck and Canada is single payer even though it has private insurance and even though there are holes in the single payer, which seems like it means it would be multi-payer. I think that gay people should be able to get legally married. But that really doesn't tell me a lot of things because I kind of just assumed that Hunter was already pro-gay marriage. Maybe I missed videos in his past where he was anti it, but that's been the standard in the United States since 20. Anyone who talks about healthcare in chat's getting permit. Team. That really doesn't tell me a lot about him. For instance, I was in favor of gay marriage back in 2009 when I first started looking into politics. Wait, this is wait, this is a really weird tangent on, on this guy's part. So he's he's watching Hunter's video and he's like, well, Hunter says he's pro gay marriage, but when was he never like, I don't know if this is the point of the video. Like, I, I, I don't know if that this would be like me watching Hunter Avalon's video and me like coming away from it saying like, I don't really think he, uh, I don't really think he elaborated on his positions on abortion here. Like, I think this is a pretty shit video. Like, like, okay. That was three years before Barack Obama actually came out in support of it. That doesn't mean I'm on the left. Now, ideally... Well, being pro-gay marriage would be a left-leaning position. I would prefer if the government weren't involved in marriage at all, but right now, states and the federal government recognize these contracts and they confer benefits onto participants in these contracts 
And when you're delving out benefits to some groups and not other groups, you're going to run into problems with violating the contract rights of those other groups. Oh, now, is this guy a libertarian? Fucking contract right? Okay, all right, dude. Now, the next thing that Hunter says he changed his position on are transgender people. And he says specifically, oh, here we go. transgender people are valid. They're scientifically valid, Bam. whatever that means. I consider truth uh, scientific, medical, and academic consensus. For the most part, and I, I recognize that those are subject to change, but that's why my perspective, for example, on trans people has changed so drastically because I recognize that from a medical standpoint, from an academic standpoint, uh, um, from even a scientific standpoint, being transgender is completely valid. Can you imagine True. a scientist, white lab coat and all, in the middle of a lab, he holds up a beaker, stares at it intently, and then looks directly at you and says, transgender people, valid. Ah, I see. He's an idiot. I get it now. It's all coming together now. I see. Ah, there we go. What? Hey, you know what? You know what is a scientific profession? Biology. Medicine. Do you know how many medical institutions have affirmed their support for the existence of transgender people? Like, do we want to run down the list? It's like all of them. I don't... I don't know if a I don't know if a chemist is the only type of scientist out there. As if that's a scientific statement. Like, what are you even talking about, Hunter? Are you talking about accepting transgender people? I have no problem with adults altering their physical appearance to make themselves more happy. In general, I'm not a big plastic surgery guy. Like, if you ask me my opinion on whether or not you should get something, I would probably say no. This is the uh, big brain research man who's comparing a medical transition to plastic surgery. Um, clearly, he has done his research for this video. No hypocrisy here in impugning Hunter for not uh, digging in deep enough. Uh, but he did. But he did watch and then extensively clip my discussion with Hunter. So that I mean, that's research covered. But I'm not against you doing it by any legal stretch. If it makes you happier, you own your body. And See, this is the weasel language that right-leaning libertarians will engage in to avoid having to commit to social positions. Oh, oh, I don't believe the government should be able to stop you from mutilating your body. That's like, that's kind of like the language that's being used here. Um, you know, like that's, like, or, or like, so like, I don't think the government should stop you from marrying black people. It's a way of like, okay, we get it. You're a libertarian. But like morally, what are your opinions on this? You know? And you're allowed to do that. However, you saying transgender people are valid because science doesn't tell me anything about your positions. What that? Look up the research. What the fuck do you mean? What? What? What is he? This is the weirdest. Yeah, it means that Hunter's perspective of trans people is in line with the current medical consensus, or at least in the ballpark. I imagine. Just go look up the medical consensus. Then you'll know. There, there you go. What do you mean? And the reason why this is important specifically is because Hunter called Ariel or Arelli, whatever this girl's- Ariel. How, does this guy have like- Is this guy like a foreigner or something? It's Avalone and Ariel. His name is a grifter because she said that she left the left even though her reasons were rooted way more in facts and logical. Like you could actually draw a line from the issue she had and what? Her, what do you mean her reasons were factual and logical? What the fuck does that mean? She made a two minute video five years out of date where she clipped together literally every like feminist that's ever been showed on a Sargon hate video complaining that trans people have gone too far. And then she started talking to people who want to see women's rights curtailed, even though she's supposed to be a woman's advocate. W what the fuck does that mean? And why she's breaking with the left specifically on those issues. Then Hunter saying that he had issues with his girlfriend Therefore, he knew he was wrong. Therefore, he thought I was wrong about everything. Having having watched Ariel Scarcella's content and having watched Hunter Avalon's sort of change over the past year, 
anybody who believes that Hunter's change hasn't been more substantiated with a legitimate sort of um, introspection of his values uh, is an idiot. Like, if anyone believes that he hasn't done so more than Ariel is, like, that, like that's an insane position to me. Therefore, science says transgender people are valid. She's not a grifter or somehow anti-trans for giving very specific... Well, we're getting pretty defensive of Ariel here. Jesus, I hope she sees this, bro. ...concerns to address why she's leaving the left on those very specific issues. Notice how weaselly this guy's language is. He doesn't actually say what the issue is. He doesn't, he can't actually say, he's mentioned it two times now, and he hasn't said for her belief that trans women aren't women, or for her belief that trans women should be thrown in male prisons, none of that. He's not actually bringing out any of her beliefs. He's just saying, and, um, I, she, she has every right to believe things she believes in for reasons she has reasons for. Like, it's, it's a very, it's a very good way of giving the appearance of knowledge while not knowing or needing to know anything about what you're talking about. Jews. However, Hunter, who claims that he's just being honest and he's about seeking truth, is giving a meaningless talking point about transgender people being valid that doesn't tell you anything about his position. I, I, I like, I don't... You watch the videos, my dude. You've clipped them extensively. I have no idea how you could possibly, like, be this reductive when you're explaining what Hunter's beliefs are. What does this mean in terms of athletes, male to female transgenders, competing and dominating women in women's sports? Oh, see, wait, no, here we go. See, ah, Hunter, you fool. You've claimed your pro-trans rights, but you haven't given a 30-minute uh, spoken word essay on the transgender man, I mean, the transgender females, destroying females in sports. What the fuck are you going on about, dude? What, he also didn't talk about his belief, his fucking position on, like, American-Japanese, like, fishing rights. Like, what, what, what exactly, this is, this is such a transparently dishonest way of casting doubt on the sincerity of Hunter's positions. Does Hunter support that? Is he against that? What does this mean? What is, what, what is any, of what relevance is this? He doesn't have to outline every belief he's ever had and currently has in a video where he talks about his decision to, like, remove himself from the right. When it comes to lesbians, who all of a sudden are being referred to as bigots for- Oh shit. Oh my fucking god. This dude's actually simping for Ariel Scarcella. He's actually taking her talking points. What about the poor lesbians who are being called bigots for saying they don't want to have sex with a woman with a penis? Or being attracted to who they were attracted to. A yep, yeah, okay, but he can't say it out loud. He has to say it like this, this like syllogistic, like, for being attracted who they're attracted to. What a fucking coward, dude. Is this seriously the guy who was fucking chest puffing on Twitter? K.A. Okay, the very thing that made them lesbians in the first place. Now, the next thing that Hunter says he changed his position on is black crime. Because right now, according to Hunter, black crime is not on the individual people choosing to commit crimes. It's a condition related to socioeconomics, which is a gigantic... Which is a, a, a statement I will make in a mocking tone um, because I've done no research on the subject and I like very simple answers rather than like truthful ones. Tick, cop out. Um, cop out. Oh, interesting. Um, black people commit more crime because of socioeconomic reasons, not because of some genetic inferiority complex or something. Now, he appears to be attempting to address race determinism, which, according to his pin comment, is a belief held widely amongst people in the conservative movement, even though I don't see a lot of evidence of that. Okay, shut the fuck up. Holy shit. My career is literally engaging with your guys' rhetoric. You're all crazy fucking racist. It's crazy how fucking racist you guys are. Holy shit. Like, it's like it's not like racism has, like, fallen out of vogue or anything like that. In the 60s, you know, the Republicans said, like, we can't say the N-word anymore. You all still believe it. Do you have any fucking idea how many conservative videos I've dragged through where they're like... The SJWs will say that, um, that, uh, 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 culture is what makes black people so violent. Personally, I have to wonder about people who would lead to a develop a culture like this. 
Fucking look at Paul Joseph Watson's Twitter. Fucking 1.1 million Twitter followers. Every other day he posts a video of a black person being loud in public so that his entire fan base can 1350 in the fucking comments. No bullshit, who I actually saw being, before I opened up this video, being talked about positively in the comments down below, is a literal neo-Nazi who has had their beliefs on, like, uh, the Jewish question and Holocaust denialism being leaked from chats that he had with left-leaning people because he's not even smart enough to properly dog whistle. Um... Like, like, this is all, like, Sargon is a fucking white nationalist. I've had two arguments with him, and he basically admitted it the last time we talked. He literally said, white countries for white people, or, like, Europe for Europeans, like, Asia for Asians. Like, th this, is, this isn't some, like, fringe belief held by the right. You guys are just racist. You're, too st you're either too stupid to realize it or too insincere to own up to it, but that doesn't change the fact that that's basically the root of your opinions on racial relations. But of course he's doing that in the most uninteresting, bland way. This person is talking to no BS right now. Is this guy live streaming? Wait, no way. Is he actually doing it right now? Is there like a live stream I can find? Ah, I don't see a, a stream video with either of their names there way humanly possible. Now, of course, this is because Hunter Avalon still, whether he's on the right or on the left, does not really look into the- Oh, shit. And we are live, ladies and- <laughs> the, 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 the fucking avatars of the white race right here. Glorious. And gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. I don't see much racism in the conservative sphere. Now, let me go talk to this literal neo-Nazi. Today, I am joined by Brooks Heatherly. Um, Brooks Heatherly. Let oh, me okay, I see. He can't get anyone's name right. You pronounce if it? any of you fucking compare how I looked, how Brooks Heatherly looked, that's an unironic ban. Are you fucking kidding me? Holy shit. Don't do that to me. Don't do that to me, guys. Don't do that to me. Name. Uh, he is the owner and content creator for No Bullshit. His links are in the description. Literally, it does. Yeah, but, and, but and yeah. that's what I'm saying. It's messed up, and it's like, it's all should be wrong. I'm. I would my maybe consider myself on the low end of having like some kind of fault here, well, but well, it's like all of it. I think anyone could talk about anything. I mean, well, why can't I, we discuss what it? I would say, what I would say is maybe you should respond with, with the way that functional has. Found that out after the fact, after she was cast as Captain Marvel. But like a lot of people, you know. <laughs> Only the most important social issues for these members of conservative intelligentsia. Oh, I, I, I've made Captain Marvel videos. Uh, I know. On the, we're closing down the economy. People are suffering. People will die as a result of the economy being closed. Yeah, down. that's where uh, I was going to. This is supposedly like flattening the curve is just an effort to spread out the infection on over a longer period of time. It's not a lead after South Carolina over the course of a year. I was certain on that. Warren, I'm at like. I know, I know. She should have already, but she's trying to hold out through this yeah, election I, thing. I mean, look. The, I, you... Oh yeah, they're living it up right now. They're asking for more lockdowns and more shutdowns and stuff. Like they want this to go on for months and months. I did a video about. I actually can't listen to anything because I can't get over the fact that for all of his like jeering videos, no bullshit looks like the biggest soy boy that I have ever seen in my entire life. I li like. Far be it from me to impugn people for their appearance, but it is actually insane to me. Like, this is the guy who, like, tries to out-alpha out alpha people, you know? I, I don't know. All right. We, I'm sorry. We, we keep... That's offensive? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the guy who made fun of my how my girlfriend looks. He called Hyena fat. Jesus Christ. It's Ethan Ralph, too. Like, it's always those types, you know? All right, let's fucking focus. To these issues, he didn't understand the conservative arguments related to black crime before, and now he's just. What are the conservative arguments related to black crime? Shifted to parroting a lefty talking point surrounding black crime. Now we've addressed this on this channel multiple times, and I've compared and contrasted different cities in order to illustrate this point. 
if race were the oh shit is he actually about to give me the wait are, am i going to get 1350 what's the what's the answer tell me the determining factor in crime then you would expect to see more crime in a place like new york that has about the same number of black people that chicago has in total population than you would see in chicago but that's not what you see if you compare homicides the chicago homicide rate is more in terms of raw numbers and six times more in terms of per capita numbers than in New York City, despite the fact that New York City, again, has about the same number of black people as Chicago's whole total population. That's not mask off, guys. Guys, uh, wait, guys, listen to the actual arguments he's making, you fucking idiots. He's making the, ob the opposite of a 1350 argument. He's saying that if 1350, if it was an inherent black thing, then there would be a proportional rate of disproportionate, like, crime committed by black people in both cities, but that's not the case. He's saying the exact opposite of what you think he's saying. Actually listen to the words, fucking idiots. Now I use that example because it's really easy to convey that information to you guys in my audience. But again, as I've said multiple times on this channel, in terms of- Yeah, he's making the 50-13 argument. Per capita violence, Chicago's not even in the top 10 in terms of cities in the United States. It's significantly behind the top three cities, which always alternate every year, of Baltimore, St. Louis, and Detroit. So obviously by looking at the numbers, there are other factors besides the prevalence of whatever ethnic group that did. Okay, this is cool. I'm glad you've done like your like basement sociological research. I don't know what this has to do with Hunter Avalon. You just, the, literally, as I was going over his video here, he was talking with no bullshit, a neo-Nazi, amicably. So the, the, the idea that there isn't like a high degree of racial essentialism in the conservative movement online is completely delusional. Determine crime, police practice. Also, yeah, this isn't a conservative argument. Guys, I've talked with race about, I've talked about race with a lot of people. How many people have I talked to who are conservatives who've said, hey, I don't think there's any correlation between rate and crime. If we take a look at the relative rate of, rate of criminality across American cities, we can see there actually isn't as high of a correlation as expected. This seems to be a product of sociological in, um, indication. How many times have I heard that? How many times have I heard that argument? Come on, guys. I've never heard anyone, I have never heard a conservative make that argument. Not once. Zero. So, it, uh, I mean, sure, you can pretend this is like representative of conservatism if you'd like. This is the prevalence of single parent households. But Hunter, who didn't understand this before, just shifts to random socioeconomics that it's, it's not their fault, it's society's fault. Wait, what do you mean? Wait. You're also saying it's socioeconomics. He's saying it's socioeconomics. Are you mad at him because he doesn't provide fucking source list in his video about him moving over from the from the right? What the fuck are you talking about? Also, hey, what do you guys want to bet that even though No Bullshit is a literal neo-Nazi, this guy was nowhere near as willing to hold uh, uh, No Bullshit accountable for his unwillingness to, um, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, lay out his views clearly. What do, what do you think? What do you think the likely... Do you think if I watched the entirety of that VOD with him and no BS, this guy would be like, hey, just so you know, like, could, like I believe, like, race uh, doesn't really influence crime. Like, I think that you, dog whistling in your videos, there have been leaks. Hmm. No call out on no bullshit. Gotta get that clout. Gotta, I hope, I hope he, hope he watched this one, bro. Hope Ariel Scarcella and no bullshit both watch this video. They, they're not responsible for their own actions, which is pathetic, weak, and again... What? He doesn't say that. He just says it's socioeconomics. Not to be unexpected from Hunter Avalon. Wait, but you just made the... He never he never said it's not... There, what? Now, the next position that I just want to point out that Hunter's not really being that forthcoming about is his position on abortion. Because oh, in this video, he says that he's still pro-life. But if you listen to his stream with Vosh, you can tell that he's actually pro-choice. I would probably side with the right on like gun issues. I'm anti-abortion. I am against abortion, but that's not to say that I want it to be like made illegal. I think that- Yeah, he's personally anti-abortion, but he doesn't believe that other people should be forbidden from having an abortion. That's a completely consistent position. It's not something he's personally comfortable with, but he doesn't want to restrict other people's freedoms. That's, that's it. That's, that's a not, th these are non-contradictory points. That abortion is a really complicated, like, philosophical discussion. So to, cl so to clarify, because chat's going to read, and I'm just clarifying. So you're, that's you fine. personally do not like abortion, but you, on, in, a, in a policy. Look, I even ask him, he says. 
support people's right uh, uh, to choose? You don't think it should be made illegal? I don't think, well, here's the thing. I don't support abortion. I don't like it. And I do think that I, you know, I do my best to debate why I think it's wrong. However, I don't think that it should be made illegal by any means. I think that okay. since it's such a complicated philosophical discussion, it needs to be, it's something that needs to change in someone's heart, personal. It needs to be a personal thing that changes for them. Uh, and I also, yeah, that's, this is a consistent position. He's philosophically uncomfortable with it, but he doesn't want his philosophical beliefs to dictate like the legality of this for other people. That this is like, this is a completely valid. So think that, you know, it's a common talking point. Actual justice warriors in YouTube chat. Oh no. <laughs> but like, if you outlaw abortion, it's not going to stop people from getting abortion. It's only going to make it so that the abortions that people do get is a lot more unsafe being personally pro-life but politically pro-choice makes you pro-choice a huge percentage of the people who i wait no it doesn't there's a huge difference between something should be legally permissible and morally permissible these are these are very different things um like i don't think there's like fund i, I don't think that fundamentally leads one to being like exclusively pro-choice also you could argue that one is pro-choice and also anti-abortion no bullshit, just said you're scared to debate. Wait, did they both show up? Can I not do videos in peace? Why can't they only show up after the end of a video? No bullshit in chat and wants to debate? Uh, hello? Hello? Hello! Hi. How you doing, mate? Um, so... I don't have a ton of time for a full debate. I would definitely debate you if you want to set something up. But um, maybe, I don't know, play the stream first before you say I don't talk about what exactly I went over with no BS for the first 10 minutes of that stream. What did you go over for the first 10 minutes? Summarize for me. All, his controversial comments, all of that. Interesting. Um, what was, Could you summarize it for me? I went over the... So I little bit of background because we did talk about this publicly mm -hmm. so when i saw those things that he tweeted about like questioning the number of people in the holocaust whatever you get what i'm saying yeah i talked to him privately and i explained to him that that's basically like the intro to like trying to reel you into that side of this you know the crazy holocaust denial spectrum and that's the first 10 minutes of the stream where you're like i bet he didn't bring that up yeah, that is something that I would bet. Um, I mean, I could go look over it. I wonder if you would be as, um, uh, 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 I guess, as um, vitriolic in targeting his obvious like anti-Semitism and Holocaust denialism as you would Hunter Avalon's um, apparent unsatisfactory level of speci specificity when talking about his political views. But yeah, I mean, if you say that, then I would be happy to go back over I mean, it and take I a look. First of all, first of all, like you way overestimated how much I am concerned with Hunter Avalon's non-existent political views changing to your side of the spectrum or moving towards because he does call himself a centrist. Um, I, like that's not something that interests me. My point was is that his video doesn't tell me much about his move to the political uh, to whatever side of the political spectrum. Yeah, I uh, I just don't know if I agree with that. I don't think that a video like that should really serve to like. Um... Uh, be a platform where you express the specifics of like every view you've moved over on and like what the contrast is between what you believe then and now. Um, more just like a general sentimental expression of your emotional journey and where you plan on going from this point forward. I think that usually this is an also, opportunity for con like uh, creators to rebrand themselves. At, if you if you look at polling related to the ab abortion issue, most of the people, uh, uh, not most, but a huge portion of people who consider themselves pro-choice politically are are pro-life personally that's what i was pointing out like oh sure that's a pro-choice position i think you could reasonably make the argument that you're anti-abortion if you're pro-choice but you believe philosophically that it's a wrong i think i could i think i can make that argument like for like for example like i'm anti-nazi but i don't believe that the government should be able to arrest people for being nazis so legally i might not be like against them in the strictest sense but like in a philosophical level i would still feel comfortable calling myself an anti-nazi but you do support violence against people that you label as Nazis. Whoa, 
I support people um, coming together and making rational moral decisions about how they want to ostracize those who are damaging society. Um, I don't support look, any look, kind of look, political violence, look, my dude. Look, look, look who's directly dancing around the subject right well, now. Well, no, it's it's a meme. It's a meme with me. Yeah, of course, I, I support like political violence against Nazis. Yeah. Same against people that you label Nazis, which every question every label. every label is something we label people that's not really like that's not no, really like people, as reductive as you think it is specific, people you specifically label as wait Nazis, do you want me do you think that i want to be god emperor of the universe and divinely pointed people and then assign them the mark the stigmata that marks them as somebody worthy of social ostracization or do you think that i believe generally speaking society should react you know very hostily towards uh, nazis <laughs> So it's people your side of the political spectrum label it if you want to get like super specific because I'm sure you're not like sussing out who's who. In what reality. do I mean by my side of the political spectrum? Because I'm only I, like you don't have to be a leftist to agree with my understanding of what a Nazi is. When you call people who are clearly not Nazis Nazis. You know, people often say that I call people who aren't Nazis Nazis and then they turn out to be Nazis. So I'm a little bit skeptical of your ability to suss out the legitimacy of my accusations. Well, you shouldn't be because way better at sussing out the legitimacy of those accusations. Who, but regardless, I don't wait, want to wait, bog wait, down. Wait, 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 whoa, you're going to throw out an accusation without backing it up? Name one. Who have I called a Nazi who isn't a Nazi? In, in your video, I put up the clips of who you're calling Nazis or who you think like the mask is slipping and all that nonsense. In my video, I've only the only content I've seen from you is the video that I've watched on stream, which is about two thirds of your video on Hunter Leaves the Right. Well, I have not seen anything in here about me calling people Nazis. Also, um, quick question. Also, uh, what? You had, who have I named a Nazi that you, you believe was an error? Uh, no BS isn't a Nazi. No BS has literally posted about the Jewish question, white nationalism, and Holocaust denial. I think that would reasonably put his positions in line with most of the positions that a Nazi would have. Yeah, you should watch the first 10 minutes of my stream. Okay, if you call him out on that, that's fine and dandy, but that doesn't change the fact that those are positions aligned with Nazi beliefs. You should watch the first 10 minutes. Okay, I don't I, I, okay I'll give it, I'll, I didn't know it was so interesting, but I'll give it a look, yeah. But, yeah, but you should finish my video first because it's excellent. And I, I keep trying, audience. people keep interrupting me. But yeah, I, I missed the first part because I was live at the same time you were live, so I have to watch it back. But yeah, I'll set something up, and I'll debate you, bro. But like, it has to be on a topic, because your audience has been bugging the crap out of me for months to debate you. Look, I, so. I take no responsibility for my audience's thirst for blood. Um, I'm sure they tr get a tremendous amount of satisfaction of seeing me tear into people. What would you want to debate uh, on? I um, it, I mean, if you get to the end, I'm sure you'll find a topic that we could debate on. Probably, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, well... but. Yeah. Uh, one one quick question. Mm -hmm. um, in your interview with T.J. Kirk, yeah, where he said that he was a free speech absolutist, mm -hmm. and then two seconds later, like after you said the same argument that he's heard a million times, but like in your Vosh voice, you got him to say that yeah, you probably should put some restrictions when somebody's audience goes over. Did you laugh to yourself when that happened? Because I laughed. No, I don't think he actually backed off his position that much. I still think we had a fundamental disagreement on what we believed. Um, I appreciate you saying that I'm convincing, though. I do do my best. It is my job. Um, I believe that in order to pre preserve free speech, there are some things you need to do at times to curtail free speech. But, but you, you laughed because I laughed. Because he stayed in an absolutist position and then immediately backed off to the same argument that he's been getting for years. And that was hilarious. Well, it's possible that he maybe expressed his initial opinion a little bit reductively, but then he expressed it with more nuance after that. I think that he's a pretty intelligent guy and he seems to have some pretty consistent positions. I don't know if he like just is, is like, it, is it weird? Is it weird for you that everybody that um, you talk to that ends up more or less moving in your direction is quote unquote intelligent, but everybody that you don't talk to or everybody that, that doesn't move towards your position is not intelligent. Is that like a weird coincidence? No, uh, the act of moving towards my position means a person is intelligent. Them not doing so means they're not. That doesn't surprise agree, me. Agree, agree to disagree. Do you disagree with the direction that TJ Kirk moved in? I said I agree to disagree. Well, on that issue, yes. I just thought that that clip was hilarious, if I'm uh, being perfectly honest. I'm glad you liked it. Are there any other particular pieces of content that I've produced that you like? Any discussions or debates? 
Um, I haven't, I, I, what you call it, I studied, well, I, I watched certain debates, which is how I found the Hunter thing, but I watched certain things when your audience started bugging me, but I haven't gone through. Um, I don't have anything off the top of my head. Gotcha. There's actually a question that I want to ask you now. It's not something that I necessarily want to debate about, but I'm genuinely curious. You would consider yourself fairly libertarian leaning, right? I just got that vibe from the video. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's good. Oh, I, I, also, I never said, I never said, nor did I imply that transgender people mutilate their body. No, it's true that like, you didn't that say that, but the language that you used is usually the language that transphobes no. will use to distance themselves from the actual positions that they hold. So when you say you stuff can, like, you can, oh, yeah, you can alter your body. There's there, no, you can alter your body in any way that makes you happier. I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. So I, ne I never said mutilated or anything to invoke that type of reaction. That's something that you added to the video that I did not say, nor did I imply it. Okay, uh, then just out of curiosity, when transgender people medically transition, do you believe that this is a this is a good thing? It is a good reflection of their will and their mental health? If they want to do it, then sure. But do you think it is something that we should be encouraging for transgender people? I'm not encouraging anybody or discouraging anybody to take medical decisions. They should do that on their own in consultation with their doctor. So you have no opinion whatsoever on the scientific or medical legitimacy of the process of transitioning? Do I think that adults should transition if that's what they want and like that's what their like their doctor think that that's a good treatment for their gender dysphoria? Of course. If, like again, I have no I but I'm not going to like encourage people to do something that alters their body. Like that's just you know, it's up to them. Like, I'm not going to say don't do it, but I'm just not involved in that. Okay, so you, you just don't have any moral claims to make on other people's, like, decisions whatsoever. Like, when First it comes all, to this stuff. I, the moral, the, the moral argument is, for me, is that they own their body, and if they and their doctor agree on a treatment path and they want to pursue it, that's up to them. And there's nothing immoral about doing that. Okay, I can accept that position. Um, the thing that I wanted to ask specifically, though, and I think this is one of the main things that I disagreed with from your video, is you made the argument, Hunter Avalone said, I no longer believe that race is like this intrinsic determinant characteristic in people's like criminality. And you said, well, Hunter hasn't researched the conservative position. Here, look. And then you explained, I think fairly, how um, criminality doesn't really map onto um, race that well, um, which I agree yeah. with, of course. Do you really believe that's reflective of the general conservative position? Look, there are people online that don't like I come from a criminal justice background. I used to design graduate courses in this subject. So there are people online that don't know the first thing about where to go for statistics, about about uh, about anything legal related. Like most of my not most of my channel, a, a good chunk of my channel is di is directed to clearing up legal misinformation. So in America, there are hot spots in this country where in, in the 90s when crime went down, it didn't really go down as much. And those are the problem areas that we have in the country. But if you are going to say a one-to-one, -one, like the, the key factor, the determining factor in crime is the racial or ethnic makeup, then that's just not factually true. I would agree that the racial or ethnic makeup of a community is not really the, um, the, the causal link to crime. I'm asking you if you believe that's the conservative argument, because this is my job. I've engaged with a lot of conservative rhetoric videos. I've had debates and arguments. And overwhelmingly, the sentiment uh, uh, from conservatives when it comes to the relationship between race and crime is either black people are inferior or black people keep committing more crimes. I don't know why. I'm not going to accept sociological explanations, which kind of leads deductively then to a biological argument. This is the experience that I've had arguing with conservatives over the past year and a half. For you to say that Hunter Avalone is being unfair in his characterization of the conservative argument when he says that he no longer believes race and crime are inherently linked, that to me seems like a little disingenuous, no? Well, there, all right. Well, there are people who don't do research, who have no knowledge of criminal justice, who just parrot things that other people say on the internet, and we'll call those people hunters. And then there are people who actually look into the issues. They actually have a background in the numbers or they are familiar with like where to find, you know, first, not firsthand sources, but like detailed statistics. And they tend to draw different conclusions. 
Okay, there are people I know so there's some, there's, who are both well researched and not well researched who both believe that black people are inherently more prone to committing crime. So hunters and like non hunters hold that position. I don't I don't really respect the distinction and the names that you've given it. I don't think Hunter Avalon's videos are like less well researched than the average conservative videos used to be. Um, I think they're I, all I wouldn't I wouldn't disagree with that. My I, I wouldn't disagree with that with a with a bunch of creators. I part of the reason my channel exists is because they're just factual yeah. incorrectness but, on but basic again, things. Do you not think racially deterministic arguments are pretty characteristic on the right in the conservative space online? I think in maybe well now you're narrowing it to like a conservative space specifically online, but you would lump in like alt right types with your basic conservatives. Well, they are conservative, yes, and they often speak with conservatives. You just spoke to an alt writer an hour ago, so I think that's. Well, I, fair. I literally just discussed like where he falls on the political spectrum with him an hour ago. Also, my Brie Larson thing, I was talking about how much I actually enjoyed her as an actor in Room, and everybody in your audience should see Room. You really kind of jumped forward after you heard what you wanted to hear. How did Brie Larson come up in the talk. first place? Uh, it, I, maybe it's from the chat, I'm not sure. We're Why would the chat bring up Brie Larson out of nowhere? Do you think that might in some we way were, be indicative of the weird hang-up the conservative community has, and that's what I'm making fun of? We were on movies at that point, but my point is, is that you kind of just assumed my position, you know, like you did with the uh, the crime position before you let my video play out. All I did before with the Brie actually... Larson thing is I said, uh, I think I said like, uh, what did I, I said something like, is it these guys need to give a life or, or these guys are so consistent or something like that. I, I don't really assign a position to you in that respect. Um, I just, um, I just, it, Brie, Brie Larson comes up a lot in conservative circles. You were talking with No Bullshit, and No Bullshit has a particular hate boner for her. Um, so it's, it was funny to me. And the fact that she came up at all is probably in some way related to the conservative community's hate boner for her. But I wasn't making the argument that, like, you specifically have Oh, a no. Hate you boner you for made her. the assumption. You gave yourself a little chuckle, and then you moved on. You're going to tell me that that was not based on an underlying assumption that you had? Well, it's based on the underlying um, where, assertion where that, that conversation was going. Well, it's based on the underlying assertion that the conversation you were having was silly, but not necessarily that you were silly. But I didn't feel the need to clarify because it felt like a very minor I was position. Rec I was recommending the room. Well, I'm just pointing out a pattern of behavior on your part where you assume my position before you actually hear it out. Like, you'll stop my video before I finish making a point. You're like, why is he not making a point? Well, to be fair, I did that like 20 times while watching your video, and one time... Um, you ended up not making a racist argument. You managed to cross that bar. Um, but I think generally I only, I, the, the I, assumptions I that I make are usually pretty in, valid. I only talked about race maybe once in that video. Yeah, and, and that time you weren't racist. Yeah, and, and I applaud you for that. That's sincere. I'm not being ironic. I'm happy when people aren't racist. But you still haven't answered my question. Do you believe... What was your question? It is broadly um, the case that racial determinism is characteristic of the conservative view on the relationship between race and crime. Well, I distinguish between the alt-right and your mainline conservative view, so no. Uh, who would you consider to be alt-right? Uh, like, a, like a Fuentes or, or um, I don't know. I don't know all these like figures, honestly. Okay. But I mean, like the alt-right is somebody... conservative. You can argue they're like the crazy like off-breed of conservative, but they're unquestionably on the right. Um, well, uh, No Bullshit has made such arguments, uh, has he not? In a debate with Destiny, he argued that the reason why black people get arrested more often disproportionately than white people is because they're stupid and they leave guns hanging out of their pants while walking by cops. Um, he led pretty hard laying on a, like a determinist argument there. So would you consider No Bullshit to be alt-right? Uh, I again, it's in the first 10 minutes where we discuss that, but uh, I from my conversations with him, I do not see him as an alt right figure. Okay, then there's but a conservative who has that view. What about Paul Joseph Watson? Would you consider him to be alt right? Um, I don't know, it's, it's hard to pin down the InfoWars guys. Yeah, they are pretty weird, but Paul Joseph Watson is very much a racial determinist. He's constantly making videos and tweeting about the how multiculturalism doesn't work because some people are more prone to violence and chaos than other groups of people. He loves that stuff. And and in the audience, like the comments section, they're just like nonstop posting like 1350, you know, so the, the I mean, look, relationship people, there people, is pretty clear. People, people in my comment section on my Hunter video, like, post stuff about Hunter's sexuality, which I never referenced once in the video. Like, I, I specifically kept it not personal, like, in my video. And, like, people in the audience 
like leaves crap in the comments that's nowhere in Just the video. for them uh and i like so do you, like do yeah. you think it might be indicative of all uh, in all uh, sorry do you think it might at all be indicative of the content that you make that you're attracting um uh, uh prejudiced or homophobic people to the chat of your videos I think it's indicative of the topic I chose, which was Hunter Avalon, which apparently he has a bunch of enemies because the comments, there's an unusually high number of comments on that video in particular. But I've talked like about Hunter Avalon. Nobody interviews. was making homophobic jokes there. I mean, on your channel, like yeah, most people didn't, most people didn't, didn't have the context of your interview months before his leaving the right video to compare and contrast. Yeah, but what about my content and what about your content leads to us having different comment sections? Well, I assume I've roped over some people that left over Hunter Avalon's video. My comment section is usually stellar and stunning because I have good people that watch me. So you think... Obviously, there's some terrible people. So I can tell you're talking through a smile right now. So you're of the opinion that the reason there were homophobic comments in your video on Hunter Avalon, but were not in mine, is because Hunter Avalon's fans came over to you and were homophobic, but your community had nothing to do with it. His ex-fans, yeah. Interesting. I don't I, do. I don't do. I don't do the cultural videos like like the gays are taking over or 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 any of that. So why did like, his ex-fans go to your video and not mine? Uh, because I'm better at metadata than you, obviously. Interesting. So you don't think there might be any other association? I mean, you know, I for somebody actually, for somebody I, who I postures actually, as a well-researched and good-faith actor, you sure are dodging well, and weaseling the fuck out of these questions right now. I'm, first of all, I'm not dodging and or weaseling. Like, I can see you have your creator app, correct? Uh, yes. Oh, there are some comments I'm looking at under your video that are claiming that race is a factor in crime. Um, oof, that looks pretty bad. 100% so must socioeconomic factors. Meanwhile, poorest white areas in Europe are virtually crime-free. That's not true, of course, but they believe it is. Uh, ooh, 1350 posting under your video. I don't tend to get that very much in my videos. It must be because of your higher algorithm um, uh, knowledge. Metadata, actually. Yes, your metadata yeah, knowledge. I, I, you can let me finish. Um, I actually have my creator app, so I know which videos are pulling in, a, you know, from suggested videos, and a lot of them are coming directly from his video. Interesting. So, and you know for a fact that I, every one of the comments that you're getting that are like 1350 I don't know. or... I don't, I, don't, I don't know. There's 2,000 comments on there, dude. Like, what do you... Like, you're... What kind of... I thought you were a metadata you master. Make? You can't sort through 2,000 comments and find out which one of these people individually uh, has, like, which uh, patterns of support for which content they, creators. It, if they have their subscriptions public, I can actually see the little subscriber tab. But, like, I can't tell exactly where these people came from, but I assume since Hunter, didn't he have, like, a whole stat with the alt-right? Yeah, because he's not a Nazi, and they don't like people who aren't Nazis, so... Okay. So he had a, he had a stat with the alt-right. You know those people follow you around. Like, you're trying to attach that to me because I made a video about Hunter's... Well, I made a video about right Hunter. Why did the alt-righters go to your comment section and not mine? Because you flipped Hunter. All right, I think we've reached the logical end of this this line of inquiry. Um, do you have any? What, what you're trying to imply is that I have like a significant alt race, uh, all I'm sorry, alt right base in my uh, in my audience. No, 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 just no, no, nothing. As, that, sorry, as no, some, I want to clarify. Nothing that's severe. Some, nothing that's severe. Nothing that's severe. As, as some kind of reflection of the content I put out. Well, yeah, even you're, though you're a conservative, even, so you will always have bigots even, in your comments. Even, even though, I mean, your comment, I'm sure your comment section is full of freaking terrible people, so. No, they're, every single one of them is good. I follow the metadata. They're all very good people. Yeah, okay. I'm just like, yeah, like conservative YouTube videos or, or uh, uh, commentators or demagogues or whatever. They're always going to attract, like, bigots, because that's what you guys no I, like. I have i have the i have like the highest caliber of people and then some of the dregs of youtube society like everyone but if you were to pull people in my audience they would be top tier all right well I, I believe you that's good wait wait one of the most liked comments under your hunter video is people talking about a white ethno state i don't 
M. Stanfield okay, 5441. Well, if you wanted to conserve America, you should have preserved the demographics of the people who made it what it was. Half the reason it's gone to shit is because we take everyone from every culture, including people who hate us. It is only the white majority who want to keep freedom of speech and only whites who want the freedom to bear arms. If it was only non-whites, Hillary would have won every state. Wake the fuck up. Um, okay, it's interesting. That must be a Hunter fan who came over. Well, that's... I didn't say a Hunter. I, I said... X fan, X fan, X fan. Yes, a, a like hunter hater. Yes, from his thing. A hunter but hater. Regardless, if my position is the opposite position in the video, somebody comments on that. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? Well, I think that as public figures, we're responsible for the types of audiences we cultivate. Um, like, I'm very, very left leaning, but I also do my best to try to get rid of people who are left leaning, who I think are like a shitty kind of left leaning. So tankies, for example, I've been very clear, like, I don't want these people in my community. Um, lately, I've been going on an anti like Bernie or bust arc, though probably not to the same level of severity, because I think these people can be reformed. I just like feeling responsible for the kind of people who enjoy my content, because if bad people like my content, or if people are being led to bad beliefs because of my content, it makes me worry about whether I'm doing good in the world. Okay. That's just my perspective on it. I know not everyone shares my uh, uh, my preference. Okay. I mean, I don't promote these people. I've said things that have made them leave. Like, I'm not afraid to stand up to any of these people. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. And I, uh, I, uh, and I, I, don't, I don't need to break more of my political positions. I could argue with these people... Uh, what you? I could argue with these people if I wanted to. Like, yeah. I, well, yeah. I love debating people. I love debating people in my community too because it keeps them keeps them on edge. All right. Well. Um, all right. Just making sure. Um, if you want to debate in the future, hit me up. You can send me an email or a message on Discord because I very rarely check all my tweet uh, notifications. Um, I'll check out the first ten minutes of your discussion with Brooks Heatherly. I'd be interested in seeing how exactly you handled that interaction. All right. All right. You have so a yeah, good one, you okay? want to set it up in the future. You should finish my video first. Oh, no, I'm tr I keep comments. trying to. Don't. We'll finish it. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to have to edit the fuck out of this segment. God. All right. Thank you for uh, speaking. We'll talk later, okay? All right. Later. Later. Okay. All right. I feel, I feel like I handled that about as well as I could have. He was just memeing. Yeah, he, um, yeah, he, I, I had like fight for every answer that he got there. He's more reasonable than I expected, actually. Yeah, he's not like full on all right or anything like that, but I, <laughs> guys, this is a rhetorical tactic, okay? This is 103. Are you ready for 103? When you're talking to people like that, you can't, don't ever get passionate. Don't ever get angry. Don't ever argue hard, okay? If they joke, joke back, all right? All you ever need to do is just calmly ask them questions you know they don't have, like, clear answers to. That's it. That's what you need to do. Don't ever, don't ever be like, you were wrong on this. This is bigoted of you. Don't ever do that. That's like, that's like a fucking, like, like a bullet train to Loserville, okay? Don't do that, all right? You keep it cool. Keep it cool. Keep it cool. You know what I'm saying? Hold on. Let me, um, yeah, I do appreciate that he was railing against the 1350 shed. Hold on. Let me open the window. I'm super fucking warm in here. I'm going to read out donations or like kind of like I'm going to skim them. You know how the rules go. Donate if you enjoy the content. I love you. And then we're going to finish the video. Okay. I'm going to have to edit the shit out of this anyway. So it doesn't really matter. You're... Yeah, maybe I can talk with him. I have like a productive conversation with him in the future. Um, okay. Oh. Keep it cool. All right, hold on. No BS didn't know that Holocaust denial isn't a Nazi talking point. Hey, don't worry. Don't worry about him too much, okay? No BS is still in YouTube chat? Holy shit. Maybe he just likes how I look. Do you think No BS is, like, gay? And, like, the community that he's in wouldn't accept it, so he just has to, like, sit here and watch, like, a dude with better, fa better facial hair, like, do his shit? I don't know. Um, he loves me. He loved me. What, what was the thing Jesse Lee Peterson said? He said, um, are you liking me right now? That's what he said. That was really good. Here, let's, we'll skim, okay? We're gonna, we're, we're gonna skim. We're gonna skim! I also think that... You know, it's a common talking point, but like, if you outlaw the abortion, 
basically pro-choice makes you pro-choice. A huge percentage of the people who identify themselves as politically pro-choice might not seek out these services personally. Okay, so Hunter Avalon is pro-choice but anti-abortion. That he just not sure if it's gonna work. Maybe I can come on a third time, Bosh, and we can we can talk. About Fuck, my beard is huge. About socialism, because talk about the things. Way I think that ca capitalism is good for a lot of things, but I talk about people on the right or vaguely on the right who repeat conservative talking points without actually looking into them for themselves. Anybody who says socialism sounds good, but it just doesn't work, or I think it would be a great idea if only it could work, doesn't have any understanding of socialism whatsoever. Oh shit, are we about to learn that socialism is double Vuvuzela? It's not even as bad. It's not a hundred million dead. What are you, a fucking commie? 200 million dead. Take one of the big code words that lefties use to push socialism to their audience, democratizing the workforce. Oh shit, I'm getting called out. Oh shit, I'm getting fucking paid. Hey! Now they say, look, this makes sense because we have democracy in government and democracy is inherently good, but we spend a lot of our time in the workforce, so we should have democracy in the workforce. That is the argument that I make. Yeah, basically. I mean, it's also about flattening the power hierarchy between the bourgeois and the proletariat, but okay, all right, okay, well, we've characterized my position, basically. Now, what does that actually mean when you actually delve into what they're advocating for? They're not talking about voluntary worker co-ops, because if they were talking about that, then you can form those right now under a capitalist system, because a capitalist economy is an economy based on voluntary association. I get it. We support the tyranny of the state because we want to rob all the hardworking business owners of their shit. What they're talking about is, let's say if you were going to start a business, you either get a loan or you secure investors in order to start a business. You take all of the risk in order to form this company. You pay your employees every step. Yep, yep. All business owners are fucking divine, like, uh, arbiters of, of justice and entrepreneurial spirit. And all the workers are just grateful and lucky to be having a job underneath them. And to rob them of all the stuff they procured from that risk is horrible. Yeah. The way, whether you're profitable or not, because... By the way, all of this, all of this applies to slave ownership as well. Literally all of this. Um, why don't you just make your own co-ops? Well, like with slavery, I don't think opening up plantations that don't have slavery is a solution to slavery. Uh, well, what about the hard work of the business owner that you're robbing from? Uh, I don't give a fuck about the slave owner's, like, wealth or possessions because their possessions are human lives. Uh, no, I don't care. Employees labor is a cost to that business. Then your business becomes successful. It starts making a profit. Mm -hmm. Now instead- Wait, it starts making a profit? Or your workers start making a profit? Mm hmm. Interesting framing there, the common capitalist framing. Would your business have made a profit with no one working there, comrade? Or was it through labor that profit was made? Of having the people who invested the money or the person who took the risk reaping the benefits of the success of that business in a society where you have co-ops where the workers own the means of production, at that point, the workers would get together and forcibly expropriate the business from the owner. Because uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Because we need democracy in the work environment for yes some reason because demo for some reason okay democracy is a buzzword that sounds good and we what it's not a buzzword it's a system of political orientation what do you mean a buzzword what the fuck does that mean a traditionally owned firm is not democratic you don't vote on shit your manager or your boss or whatever like controls everything democratized workplace has democracy what, what, what does it mean a buzzword means like a catchy word that doesn't really have any meaning or it's so reductive as to be like kind of purposeless democracy is not one of those words we need it in the workforce i don't know why but we need it now what do you mean? I don't know why. To bring about democracy. Wait, what? You just said why. A minute ago, you said to bring about democracy. We prioritize democracy in our government. Why don't we in our businesses? And then later he's like, I want democracy. I don't know why. Like, wh wh what do you mean? You said why. A quick question. Where did what I just described to you sound good on paper if only it worked in the real world? The part where the people who actually make the profits for the business seize the means of production and get to collectively own the place they work at. That part sounded really good. That sounded really good to me. I got a little bit, 
I got a little little hard at that part. A little bit of pre cum. Because what I just described to you was the complete and utter destruction of private property rights. <laughs> also, no one is going to take the risk. No one's going to borrow money. Nobody's going to invest or seek out investors into a company if at the moment that company becomes successful, the workers can just get together, form a lynch mob, and forcibly expropriate that business. Wait, does he think a market socialist society is one where it's all worker co-ops, but individual proprietors go out and start businesses that are traditionally owned until the workers revolt? The company starts off as a co-op in a worker, in a market socialist society you know there's no revolution you're part of the people every person you bring on would also collectively own it it's collective risk and collective reward and democracy what is it is he thinks it's like it's the world is full of worker co-ops and uh, 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 the traditionally owned firms are dying uh, private entrepreneurs fear for their lives at every moment at, at any point in time your workers could be made uh, 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 made radicalized by the existence of the tyrannical democracy propaganda they will rise up and mutineer you're like what, what? no it starts as a co-op jesus you know we don't we don't want it to be <laughs> the goal isn't a world of perpetual violence the goal is a world without violence and you do that by securing the rights of the individual from the owner and the investors. You're disincentivizing the creation of new businesses. You're disincentivizing the hiring of people. Act hey, wouldn't it incentivize the shit out of people who want to get on board with a project if everyone collectively owned it? Hey, wouldn't it incentivize the shit out of innovation if people knew that they collectively owned the enterprise that they would be providing that innovation for? Hey, wouldn't it incentivize the shit out of new business creation if people who are necessary in the, um, or people who are necessary in the production of that new business know they're going to have an equal share in the production of that business? Maybe? That's not a good idea. It doesn't sound good. It's not moral, and it isn't good. And well, it sounds good when I say it. What what did this What did this guy say when he was talking with me? He was like, "T.J. Kirk said this thing," and then you said with your Vosh voice this thing, and then he like backed off or something like that. Do I have like the Vosh voice? And it doesn't work. Again, it doesn't take a lot to understand the arguments against socialism. A basic amount of research into economics, the important- you, 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 can't, you can't appeal to research. You can't appeal to research when you don't understand what socialism is. Also, apparently no bullshit's reasons for not debating me is because I'm a Satanist. Some One, one of my fans has been like, like chatting with him on Twitter or something like that. And he's, he's found like a, a meme excuse. That's, that's the reason. ...importance of private property rights or conservative argumentation against socialism, and you'll understand how to poke holes through the system that they're putting forward. You're a buffoon if you call yourself a conservative or vaguely right-leaning person, and you concede the moral high ground to an authoritarian ideology that's an... Authoritarian ideology, he says, after mocking democracy and calling it a buzzword. Okay, dude. God, do they not understand how blatantly hypocritical their positions come off at? Literally, like, 30 seconds ago, democracy, whatever that means, nice buzzword. Like, he sounds like a fucking monarchist. Jesus Christ. Inherently in conflict with human rights, like socialism is. It's not a great idea that just so happens to backfire. It's a terrible idea. Also, wait, why is he even talking about this? Hunter Avalon's not a socialist. Like, what? Why, why, how do we even get on this? Is he just directly critiquing me now? Or is he critiquing like what he thinks like the future position of Hunter Avalon is going to be? Yeah, that works out exactly the way it's designed to. Now look, if Hunter wants to leave the right or anyone wants to change their political ideology for any reason, that's fine by me. People do change over time. 
And Hunter, as he said in his video, started his channel when he was 19 years old, and he never really delved deep into conservative argumentation. He I just want to, again, like, I, I, I'm not trying to, like, simp for Hunter or anything. I'm just saying, like, having watched a fuck ton of conservative media, Hunter Avalon's videos, even back when he was a conservative, were at or above par, like, easily. He was more parroting conservative talking points. So when he had his ideology challenged by an ideologue, he really had no defense for that. And oh, ideologue. Hey, this guy talks a big game, but I mean, he just talked with me. He sure didn't seem too confident in challenging any of my points in person. Anytime you put someone who's not really committed to their ideology with someone who's more of a zealot, you're going to end up in a situation with a person who is really non-committal. I'm a zealot? Jesus Christ and their positions weren't grounded in anything moves toward that zealot that's what happened with hunter when he talked to vosh but i have a what's interesting is that ajw here isn't actually like i it, has he watched the debate that i had with hunter avalon in the first debate i had with hunter avalon we fiercely disagreed with like everything like does he think our first interaction was him coming on to speak amicably with me our first interactions were incredibly mutually hostile they just developed, um, you know, over time. It's weird, like, he's starting, he's acting as though the start of Hunter's conservative positions and their legitimacy is rooted entirely in how he started to, like, see things after his debate with me. The problem with is this holier-than-thou attitude about how Hunter's change is different from anybody else changing political ideology because he's... Wait, my holier-than-thou attitude? ...moving more left, and the people who move right they're obviously doing it for the money or some such thing. And Hunter, he doesn't care about the money, he just cares about the truth. The purpose- Yes. True. The purpose of this channel was for me to talk and for me to share my authentic, genuine opinions. And if I no longer can do that out of fear of pissing off my audience or pissing off my fan base or losing subscribers or something, then this channel has lost all purpose it's really that simple if i'm not able to be myself and if i'm not able to be authentic on this channel about the fact that some of my political positions have changed then this channel i might as well just delete it it's useless it would be dead to me i'm not a grifter i'm not doing this for money i have no financial gain from this um i do, i like i can't overstate this enough but like all you have to do is not you you all you have to do is be able to walk and chew gum at the same time to be able to monetize like fame as a conservative it's so easy conservative networks know that their audiences are stupid so they'll pick up anyone um that's how caitlin bennett has been picked up she was just some dumb bitch at a college who nobody liked she's not particularly pretty and she can't speak that well and somehow she's now like she got on fox fucking news like the, 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 the rule, yeah, not to mention, like, the shitting herself drama, like, do you think the left would ever take anyone after all that stuff? Like, the amount of fucking incompetence and baggage she had on her? No. It is always going to bring more money in. Unless, oh, uh, unless, you know, like, Ben Shapiro, you know, Paul Joseph Watson, uh, you know, uh, uh, Steven Crowder, all these people are being funded. Um, like back end by like much more wealthy institutions, you know, the only thing like the only equivalent I can really think of is like the Young Turks, but the Young Turks is led by Yank and Cenk is not a socialist to my knowledge. We don't really have that equivalent over here. Um, just, there's no monetary incentive in like moving to the left. There's a huge incentive in moving to the right. And it is certain And if you ever doubt that, consider how people like Candace Owens and Dave Rubin can become so powerful and influential that they get to be one of the most viewed conservative demagogues. Candace Owens has appeared before Congress several times at this point because they left the left. Name me a single huge leftist who used to be a conservative who moved over. Like who was publicly a conservative. Like they made money as a conservative. They had a job as a conservative. And then they moved over. Nobody. Nobody. It's only a little irritating that people are accusing me of Obama. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Of being a grifter or doing something just for money when um I think if I were regurgitating the same right wing
Warren. Okay, I think a 20 year like political shift is pretty different from like her trying to get on like a talk show, but all right, if you want to take Warren. Talking points, even if I didn't believe them, that would make me a grifter. What I'm doing right now is not the move of a grifter. I mean, like- No BS is calling you a pedophile and saying all your fans are pedophiles. D have you seen how no bullshit looks? He absolutely diddles kids. I don't care about no bullshit. You don't need to inform me. I know what he is. He's a stupid coward. If he ever wants to debate, I'll debate him. I'm not interested in a fucking live feed of, of his, of, of, of like every opinion he's ever had. His channel is dying. He has two thirds of a million subs. He's putting out videos every day and he's getting what, like 30, 40,000 views a day. This dude has nothing better to do except cling on to his dying empire and try to bait relevance from people who are on the rise like me. I don't care about him. It's okay. And I, I, I don't care. Like if he wants to come on and debate, that's the only time I'll care about him. I'm just trying to be as authentic and, and as transparent and as truthful as I can. Which is complete and total nonsense, and everybody knows that's nonsense. Hunter makes his living through YouTube. Obviously, he cares about the money. And Hunter says in his video- Wait, he never said he doesn't care about the money. He says that this isn't a financial decision. That for a long time, before he started making changes on his channel, he knew in his heart that he was wrong about a lot of issues, but he didn't really change his content. By Hunter's own definition, when you're repeating positions that you no longer agree with for money, that makes you a grifter. But even in this video where- Yeah, but then he changed it. He realized there was an inconsistency between the things he believed in and the things he was publishing. And then he changed it. It was a mistake that he made that he's working to fix. That's admirable. Where Hunter is supposedly being honest with his audience. I mean, after all, he opened it up with a personal tale about how he wasn't a good person in his own personal relationship to build up sympathy for him. Hunter isn't telling the truth about how far he's moved on how many issues. If you go to he the- did, He doesn't talk about it in the video. He's just talking in the video about his position change. He's not like, and here specifically is where I am. I have, uh, here, here is my epistemic foundational belief system. I have changed this, this, and this. You can see a slight move to the left in this position. I'm holding steady on this one. This one, a very severe turn to the left. If we take a look at all 192 political positions that I have previously expressed a belief in in this channel, we will go over every single one of them, the reasons why I've changed them, the extent to which I have changed them, and sources I have to back my, like this is just concern trolling. This is bad faith concern trolling. Whoa, didn't mean to double click. You gonna, you gonna, no? Okay. Vosh oh, stream, there's sure. a huge section in it where Vosh is talking about other content creators in the online right. And Hunter and Vosh are talking about how all these creators are either white nationalists, alt-right, Nazis. Yeah, literally, literally, yes. I mean, whole, <laughs> what? And I, and I, AJW over here, he was like, you call too many people Nazis. I asked him who, after like dodging the question three times, he was like, no bullshit, the Holocaust denier. So <laughs> like, I don't know. Or fascist. Now call me crazy, call me a conspiracy theorist, because I know that Hunter said in this video that he definitely doesn't care about money. But do you think that he might be soft pet? Didn't say he doesn't care about money. ...how much he's moved to the left on issues like everyone on the right being an automatic racist that's radicalizing their audience into Nazis because True. he believes that if he espoused those views on his channel that it might negatively impact him financially. That must be a conspiracy theorist because Hunter only cares about truth. Even though he's on the Vosh stream saying one thing and he's saying that, oh, he didn't move that much on his own channel. That That's just about truth. That, that's just what it is. It's not, it's not about anything else. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, then please show me by leaving. Okay. All right. Uh...